Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host here, and I hope you look are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is on why Frank Lampard loves Mateo Kovacic and Jorginho so much when perhaps people think or would have thought maybe he wouldn't love them so much because of the whole Frank Lampard only likes playing English youth narrative. But no, he absolutely loves these two guys. I'm gonna go into their season so far statistically what they bring to Chelsea and why Frank Lampard really does love them. Quick reminder to you there to subscribe to Football Therapy as I upload daily Chelsea FC content. Please do subscribe if you're a Chelsea fan and why not subscribe if you are not because eventually I'll do some non-Chelsea videos again and if you want to help me out please do like this video. Right, Frank Lampard comes into the fold at Chelsea Football Club after the departure of Maurizio Sarri when he goes back to Italy to manage Juventus in Turin. So people know Frank Lampard likes the Chelsea Academy youth and probably will play them as they've got a transfer ban as it's turned out. But you know what? He loves a superb blend of his youth products as well as experience in the team and that's becoming more and more evident as the season comes on. Two players I want to talk about in this video, Jorginho and Kovacic. He really does love and he's constantly waxing lyrical and singing their praises. Which is a bit strange because perhaps you'd think, oh, maybe he'd go for Reese James in midfield, Mason Mount, these trusted Chelsea Academy players. But you know what? He loves these two players. I'm going to go into why. But before, I want to sort of give a bit of narrative of why they're a little bit more unsuspecting for this season's story. Let's start with Mateo Kovacic, right? This guy, he went on loan to Chelsea under Maurizio Sarri from Real Madrid because he wasn't getting into the first team at Madrid. He was already a really experienced player. This guy's played well for Inter Milan. He's, you know, he's got a wealth of European experience. He speaks five languages fluently. I just want to throw that in there. I just think that's so impressive. He's a young guy and he's super talented, but he was, I guess, meant to be the successor to Modric. But the dude was getting into his 20s and he wasn't getting enough time. So I guess he came to Chelsea to prove himself, to show, look, I'm a baller, hopefully to muscle him his way back into the Real Madrid team. Don't know why I keep saying it like that. I hear Spanish people say it and I just enjoy it. Anyway, to muscle his way back into the Madrid team. And really things didn't turn out like that. He had a good loan spell at Chelsea, won the Europa League. But then he could have easily just gone back to Madrid, right? Think about it. He's proven himself a good player, a valuable player. Um, the coach that he played well under has now gone to Juventus. The club he's currently at have a transfer ban, so they're not going to bring in, an, in any more quality. And he knows they've just lost their superstar in Eden Hazard. Plus, they're bringing in a coach who we also will know is very, very inexperienced and has only had one year in coaching in Chelsea's... Chelsea's? England's second tier. So, Kovacic would have a few reasons to be wary of this move, but you know what? He put pen to paper, he committed himself to SW6 and Stanford Bridge and Chelsea and the fans and Frank Lampard and he's joined. Now, Jorginho, this one's a little bit obvious, right? Sorry, son, the guy who only does sideways passes, the boo boy of Stanford Bridge. Now, Jorginho, for Chelsea fans and basically football fans, is a really good feel-good story. I was a fan of Jorginho all last season. I was tweeting about it, about how, you know, really his metrics are very good, defensively he's good. He's such a cerebral, intelligent player in terms of positioning. And obviously, all of that still remains, but other parts of his game playing under Frank Lampard have become more evident. Like, you know, he plays further up the pitch, he's making more key passes. We're gonna get into the stats in a moment. But he's a leader. He integrated himself into all sort of parts of the dressing room. He wasn't like just in the Brazilian or Italian clique. He made sure he goes to talk to everyone. He makes them laugh. He's learned really good English considering. And Frank Lampard's come in. He sees this guy who's got loads of experience. He's a little bit older. He's making everyone laugh. He's friendly with absolutely everyone. He's constantly making sure everyone's happy and okay. But as soon as he gets on that pitch, He's absolutely a leader. Super Frankie Lampard saw there was a lack of leadership in his squad. And as soon as he saw these natural attributes from Jorginho, as soon as he's on the pitch commanding people, because that's very much his game, right? The director, the regista. He's very aggressive in the tackle. He's very like commanding to his you know, peers on the pitch. So Lampard saw that. And in a squad of young, inexperienced players, he was like, mate, you're my boy. And that's when he started singing the praises of Jorginho. He absolutely loves him. Obviously, Azpilicueta was made captain immediately because he was vice-captain before when Cahill was captain, who was now departed, so it just made sense and it was fair to give it to Azpilicueta. But had 
Frank Lampard had no affiliation with the club and just come in and perhaps as P and you know Jorginho neither of them were captain I think he would have given the captaincy to Jorginho straight up so Jorginho could have left Chelsea after Sarri left he had a really hard time right he got booed by the Chelsea fans a lot of the time the fans took their anger out on Sarri on Jorginho it was really unfair but instead of you know sulking or getting angry or fighting back he got his head down he just got better and better and better throughout last season and he had a couple of like man of the match immaculate performances last season to the point where Stamford Bridge started singing his name. He won them over, he learned English quickly, he was doing English interviews, he's a leader on the pitch, he's you know a good character around everyone in the dressing room and he was putting in superb performances. No matter how stubborn football fans can be, he won them over, that transferred over to this season, he wanted to stay, Chelsea made a video about Chelsea's Jorginho, not Sarri's Jorginho. He said, no, I want to play for Chelsea, not Sarri. And the rest is history. He nailed his colours to the mask. He's a blue. Frank Lampard loved all that. And to be honest, he fills a void at Chelsea in terms of that, not just his play style, but like I said, leadership. I've said it a thousand times already. Leadership, leadership, leadership. But good, positive character. Feel good guy and basically what Chelsea need. Right, let's open this statistics page because I want to show you some of the metrics for these two players this season. Starting off with Jorginho. He already this season has a goal and an assist, which I think is better than last season already. I know it's only a goal and an assist, but it's basically testament to him playing further up the pitch. He's got a little bit more license. I think Sarri very much kept him in the controlled zone when he played under him. Frank Lampard's giving him some more license. He's playing a very, very similar role but these little changes make all the difference and he's already got a goal and assist. Hopefully he can get a couple more goals and assists by the end of the season. He's further up the pitch and taking more risks, yes, but he is an 87% passing accuracy still, which is pretty darn immaculate considering the play style of Frank Lampard being direct and risk taking. So to maintain a really high passing accuracy just shows what a superb player he is. He makes over a key pass per game now as well, 1.1, which is really, really good. It's no longer lateral passing. He goes up the pitch, he's got an eye for it. He often makes the assist before the assist or tries to, and he's basically seeing the runners now, and he's, you know, we all know he's a very uh, lucid player, right, Jorginho, you can see what's going on around him. So 1.1 key passes per game, if that cranks up even more throughout the season, that's really, really good for the midfielder. Right, Jorginho has a perception of being poor defensively, but this is not the case. Jorginho makes 4.8 tackles and interceptions per game, which is a really decent number to be fair. And for a little bit of perspective, that's more than both Rodri and Fabinho for both Manchester City and Liverpool respectively, who play the same role of Jorginho in a 4-3-3 system. Now, I know what you're saying, both Rodri and Fabinho will need to make less tackles and interceptions due to their team's playstyles. But you know what? City have struggled at times this season. They've dropped points. They've been under, you know, pressure and stuff. And still, Jorginho is making these tackles and interceptions. Remember, Chelsea is still a decent side. Sure, they were poor defensively on transition. I think that's systemic. And it's Jorginho that's making these good defensive numbers. So that's really, really good for the Italian. Um, good creatively, good going forward superb leader and good defensively so Jorginho really does need some respect put on his name Frank Lampard certainly respects him uh, that's why he's a starter in his team let's switch over to Matteo Kovacic's stats like Jorginho he has an immaculate pass accuracy Kovacic has 88% pass accuracy average which is superb for a player playing in this Chelsea side, like I said before, that are taking risks. And someone like Kovacic as well, he's much more mobile than Jorginho. And obviously passing when you're moving is more difficult. So that's very, very good. Kovacic makes 2.1 tackles and interceptions per game, which actually, considering what his role is in the team, is very, very good. He roams and progresses the ball. So to still make 2.1 tackles and interceptions, basically being defensively good or contributing well enough defensively, while being that player that links defence to attack well in terms of, you know, carrying the ball and not passing the ball. That's a superb statistic. 2.1 dribbles per game from the Croatian, which is really, really good as well. We know for a long time he's a good dribbler. He's got the sort of same physical build as Eden Hazard, and he's very good, like I said, the sort of theme of Kovacic in this segment is he's a ball progressor who picks it up and carries it up the pitch. So he does that by dribbling often in terms of take-ons. Very good 
from the Croatian. <laughs> Also completes 2.1 long balls per game, so even when he's in the middle of the pitch, he can go out wide and he can switch the play or play the ball vertically down the pitch really well. So it's really good that he can basically cross the ball accurately long as well. All right, let's get rid of this statistics page for a moment. So there's a couple of main features that make these players so invaluable. With Kovacic, like I've just been talking about, he's a very good ball progressor and dribbler. He covers a lot of ground. But what makes him so, so good and so invaluable for Frank Lampard, Chelsea play out from the back and they want to play out of the press. You can see that's really, really evident in Frank Lampard's football. There is no player in Chelsea Football Club's team at the moment who is more press resistant than Mateo Kovacic. Like I said, he's got the similar build of Eden Hazard. And remember Eden Hazard on the ball in possession, he's never like gonna get dispossessed in terms of people pressing him. He always wriggled out and dribbled out. This is what Mateo Kovacic can do. He's not a sort of creative playmaker or attacker like Eden Hazard in the final sort of few yards of the pitch, but bring it back down a bit. And he's very much a similar player uh, stylistically in terms of progressing the ball and being defensive. Very, like I said, very good at linking defence to attack, play out of the press, a really useful cog for getting Chelsea out of trouble. And of course, Jorginho, like I said, still has the defensive numbers to be very, very good, but he's got a little, I don't want to call him like Fabregas, because he hasn't got that same eye for a pass as Fabregas did for the runners, but he's getting a lot better in terms of service, and he is very good at getting the ball forward with his passes. He's aggressive, he doesn't basically flop at all, he gets... He's stuck in essentially. Chelsea often have been criminally soft in midfield, and when you know you've got someone like Jorginho who's shown a bit of hardness and leadership, it's invaluable. Frank Lampard has a wealth of talent for coming through the Chelsea Academy, and he wants to use that. But when he's got these two sort of European cultured, experienced footballers, both at a really good age he makes some starters in his football team. I mean, obviously I could have added N'Golo Kante to this video because he loves Kante, but that would have been almost too obvious and Chelsea were always gonna keep Kante. The thing is with Kovacic and Jorginho, both of them could have easily gone. I mean, you know, you can make the argument the transfer ban forced Chelsea's hand, but in terms of the players wanting to stay at Chelsea and committing themselves and basically putting themselves in for the cause and the coach reciprocating the love back to them, there were maybe two unlikely candidates, so it's a really feel-good story in that sense. Anyway guys, what do you think? Get down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts and feelings on this subject. How do you feel about the two players? Do you think it's a feel-good story like me? Do you feel like they could be stars for Chelsea for a long time? Let me know your thoughts. And remember, if you've enjoyed today's video, please do like the video and of course subscribe if you are new. You're welcome to join the Football Therapy Discord if you like. The link is in the description via Patreon to chat to me and the gang about Chelsea and football. You can follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. That's it from me, guys. I'm out. You enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be